Welcome to Your Bookkeeping Matters. I'm Lisa Turner, bringing you short and snackable weekly episodes on bookkeeping and business matters in an easy to understand way so you can be in control and confident that you know your bookkeeping matters. Let's dive into this week's episode. Hello, hello, wonderful listener, and thank you for joining me once again. As promised in our last episode, today we're venturing further into getting savvy with foreign currency transactions. If you remember in the last episode, we simplified the basics of exchange rates and the world of invoicing sales in foreign currency. And we explored the importance of exchange rates and how using various sales platforms and the right accounting software can facilitate super smooth transactions for your business. Today, I'm flipping the coin to the other side and focusing on expenses in foreign currency, a territory with its own challenges. And like always, I'll break it down step by step, providing you with the knowledge and the tools you need to sail smoothly without the hiccups. Whether it's about knowing what GST or taxes you can and can't claim on these foreign currency purchases, how to record them to make sure you're claiming the total local amount. So if you're in Australia, the total AUD amount. We've got it all covered in this episode, so grab your notebook and a cup of coffee or drink of choice because we're about to get Foreign Currency Savvy Part 2. I want to jump straight into one of the biggest issues I see when it comes to purchasing or expenses in foreign currencies, and I'm talking about when you import goods. You as the business owner need to be aware generally there will be GST implications and import costs and duty you get on charged on top of the overseas purchase. And this is the topic overall of GST on imports. So there are two parts to this. And the first one is claiming the expense or the purchase from the overseas supplier. You'll have your invoice from the overseas supplier in foreign currency Sometimes they do it in AUD, depending on how they like to invoice you. But generally, it will be in foreign currency. And you claim the whole cost of this in the AUD, Australian dollar, or your local currency if you're tuning in from outside of Australia. Let's imagine you have an invoice from a supplier in the US and the invoice is for a thousand US dollars. We'll keep it really simple and we'll use an exchange rate. One US dollar is equivalent to 1.56 Australian dollars. Just as an example, the real rate will be different, of course. You would claim this 1,000 US dollar expense as 1,560 Australian dollars in your books. Always remember to use the exchange rate in your software at the time of the transaction or the amount on your bank statement to calculate the AUD equivalent. So that Australian dollar amount you paid to your overseas supplier, we'll use our $1,560 example, is the expense you claim here, not the $1,000 US. And there is also likely no GST to claim on this, even if you're registered for GST. You can only claim GST on purchases where you have a valid tax invoice with an Australian ABN, Australian business number on it, and they, the supplier, are registered for GST. Now, if you're using accounting software with the foreign currency option turned on, it will do its thing. And when you match the payment to the invoice and the different currency, all is good and the perfect amount of the expense will be claimed. So you've done part one. You've claimed the full expense in AUD of what you've paid the supplier. And I see too often business owners are doing the books manually without bank feeds and on a spreadsheet and they type in the foreign currency amount, the 1000 US, not the AUD equivalent, meaning they've either claimed way too much or way too little. Now, the second part, and this is where it gets sticky, 
So if you feel like this is too technical and you want to make sure someone checks it over for you, it's important you flag this one with your trusty professional bookkeeper or accountant. The freight forwarder, the company who grabs your goods as they arrive into the country, will invoice you separately for any local taxes and duty. And there is generally a large portion of GST on this you need to claim if you're registered for GST. If you're not, it simply forms part of your cost of goods. But what most people, a lot of bookkeepers included, get wrong here is they only claim 10%, which is our GST rate here in Australia, of the invoice, meaning you could be missing out on potentially thousands of dollars of GST to claim back on your BAS, your business activity statement. So if you don't get this, keep the invoices in a separate folder on Dropbox or wherever you store them for your BAS or tax agent so they can run through them with a fine tooth comb and check it over for you. If you're working with us in a one-on-one capacity and we take care of your numbers here at My Practice Accounted For You, you know why we ask you for this duty form on your overseas purchases. It's not to be painful and annoying. It's to keep your numbers squeaky clean and claim all the GST. I see far too often people missing out on GST credits because they don't understand this GST on imports. Okay, the next thing I want to flag with you on foreign currency or overseas purchases, let's talk tax invoices. For Australian purchases, the ATO absolutely requires you have a valid tax invoice with a current ABN, Australian business number on it, to be able to claim the expense. Head back to a super early episode of the show, Do Your Tax Invoices Say the Right Things? You'll get all the details there, what a tax invoice is. But what on earth do you need to get from your overseas supplier who barely responds to your emails and ignores you when you ask for a tax invoice? They're probably ignoring you because they likely don't know what a tax invoice is. What you actually need from them is pretty similar, but you probably already have all you need. You have to have a record to prove it. So the record can be your order confirmation from them, their invoice, their receipt. There's no technical name or requirement for overseas purchases. What you need is the same for a purchase here in Australia. It must be related to earning your income and the record needs to have important details like who you bought it from, their address to some extent to show it wasn't purchased in Australia, how much you paid and when, and what you bought. It can be in any currency. It doesn't need to be an invoice in Australian dollars. Now, once you have your invoice or receipt, and like I said, it can be as simple as the order acknowledgement, the email they've sent you that details all the purchases, you then need to remember to convert it with those exchange rates we've talked about and claim your local currency, AUD, for those of us here in Australia. But again, we want the simplest way to do this. What did you pay in AUD from your bank account? That's your amount to claim because it's what your bank charged you using their exchange rates. You get to claim your exact cost as the expense. And also, if you're using accounting software, again, it takes care of this for you. The important thing to remember is to keep it simple and accurate. Don't get all technical trying to look up rates and exchange things yourself. It's literally the AUD, the Australian dollar you paid from your bank account is your expense that you're able to claim. Bringing us back to the basics of recording your expenses – Always remember to record and claim them in AUD or your local currency. And the simplest way to do this is using accounting software. I always say running a business, you need to use accounting software. So you can't tell me if you're importing goods or paying expenses in foreign currency, you're not running a business and it's not worth the investment in accounting software. You absolutely are in business and need to invest in accounting software. And yes, I have an episode on software, 
Eight Ways Accounting Software Saves You Time and Money has been a super popular one. Dive back and have a listen to that if you want to know more about the benefits of using accounting software. And lastly today, I want to highlight a few common mistakes to avoid when it comes to taking care of your expenses in foreign currency. The first one, claiming the wrong amount. And we've touched on this throughout the episode. The mistake here is instead of converting a thousand US dollars purchase to your AUD equivalent, you enter it as a thousand dollars AUD which means a pretty big error in your numbers and you should be claiming a much higher amount as your expense. Stepping back to my earlier example, if you accidentally record a $1,000 US purchase as a $1,000 AUD when the actual AUD amount was 1560 with the 1.56 exchange rate we used as our example, you miss out on claiming an additional $560, which adds up to quite a lot of missed expenses being claimed over time. A super simple solution to this one, always double check the currency noted on the invoices and use a reliable, consistent method to enter your expenses where you look at the AUD amount. Like bank feeds in an accounting software, you'll generally claim the right amount doing it this way. Mistake number two is claiming GST without a valid ABN on overseas purchases and foreign currency. If your overseas supplier charges you GST or taxes on the invoice and you're registered for GST, you can't claim a GST credit unless the supplier has an Australian business number and they're registered for GST. Nine times out of 10, it will be their local taxes you've been charged, i.e. VAT, value-added tax, which you can't claim as a credit on your BAS here in Australia. How do you avoid this mistake? Be meticulous in checking invoices to see if the supplier quotes a GST-registered ABN on the invoice before you claim any GST credits. And we do this for both local and overseas purchases for all of our clients. And mistake number three to share with you, claiming GST when an ARN is quoted. You might not know what an ARN is. It is an Australian registered number. And through our legislation here in Australia, This ARN generally pops up on digital purchases where an overseas supplier, for example, of software is required to have this ARN and charge you GST. But guess what? You can't claim this one back on your BAS as a GST credit. It forms part of your costs overall. You still get to claim the GST charged as part of your expenses, but it forms part of your subscriptions costs, for example. You're not out of pocket, so to speak, because it's still a tax deduction. So keep this one in mind. You can only claim GST when there is an ABN, no ARNs. How do you know the difference and avoid this one? There is an ABN lookup tool. It's on abr.business.gov.au and you can pop the number in and it will let you know if it's a valid ABN. If it doesn't come up, chances are it's an ARN and there's currently no lookup tool for ARNs. So if the search doesn't return anything, don't claim any GST credits. A hot tip here though, the premise behind this ARN is when the overseas supplier has the ARN, they're only supposed to charge GST to end users, retail users. A lot of them You can advise that you yourself are a business, let them know your ABN and your own GST status, and most times they then won't charge you the GST anyway. And a perfect example of this is Facebook or Meta. Once you store your ABN in your ads account, you won't be charged GST. 
And I've already mentioned the episode on tax invoices. There are a few other related episodes and blogs you can check out if you're after some more insight on GST and mistakes and our BAS process here in Australia. Jump onto my website and search your heart's content. There's loads of blogs and podcast episodes to help you there. As I round off this episode, I hope you're feeling more confident in your foreign currency know-how when it comes to expenses in different currencies, the related import taxes and GST popping up on those pesky overseas purchases. I've certainly covered a few different areas over the last two episodes to help you become savvy with foreign currency. And I want you to remember to keep it simple and accurate don't overthink things. And while there are always potential pitfalls or mistakes, if you arm yourself with the knowledge and you're always learning, you'll be able to fix them up or avoid them altogether. Oh, something I've thought of in the moment, I've mentioned a few times to use the amount on your bank statement. There is a common misconception that the current exchange rates listed online or in the news is the exact rate you'll get or the one that you need to use. And that unfortunately is not the case. Those rates are the main ones or the rates the banks use to trade the currencies. So when you or I or our businesses use smaller amounts of those foreign currencies, we get what's called a retail rate, which is most times not as great and also includes some conversion fees. And if you're paying on credit card, there will be even more fees involved impacting your final cost, which is why you need to check the actual amount you ended up paying in your local amount from your bank statements. I need to remind you as well, it's absolutely vital to get these things right, to protect the financial health of your business and be compliant with the ATO. And I didn't know attitude won't get you out of hot water should the ATO come knocking or want to trawl through what expenses and GST you've claimed on all these purchases. So consult with a professional to get the support and advice you need Always surround yourself with the right people in areas which aren't your strength or expertise without stressing yourself with the attitude, I need to know it all right now. Don't put unnecessary pressure on yourself. Small business is one place where you'll always be learning. You can't know all the things all at once and everything is constantly changing. So long as you are always trying to learn and keep up with these things and like I said, surrounding yourself with the right people in these areas. Keep those numbers clean and accurate And thank you again for joining me this week. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the two-part series on getting foreign currency savvy. If this episode has empowered your business journey, please take a moment to leave a review. Your feedback not only helps me tailor the content to be exactly what you want to hear, but also supports other business owners like you find the guidance they need. And please feel free to reach out with any requests or questions and I will catch you next week.